Hey everyone, this is Millicent and I'm going to inform you a little bit about digital citizenship. So let's start with this. What is a digital citizen? A digital citizen is a person who makes use of information technology in order to take part in society, politics and the government. Karen Mosberger defines digital citizens as those who use the internet regularly and effectively. And I believe that most of us use the internet almost every day, if not every day. So please do pay attention to what I'm about to inform you about, as this might benefit you for a lifetime. We have nine elements of digital citizenship. We're going to take a look into each and every one of them. The first one is digital access. This is defined as the ability to partake in the digital society. For example, when you use the internet on a computer, then you have digital access. By having access to the digital world, you have the benefit of learning opportunities, information storage, social connectivity, etc. And you should also be aware that not everyone has an opportunity to digital access. So do consider yourself lucky. Number two, we have a digital commerce. This is when an individual or organization buys or sells goods or services online. For example, buying online music or games is part of digital commerce. However, you should be able to identify indicators such as a padlock or key symbol on a website that guarantees it to be a secure website before you buy anything online. So please guys, be careful before you purchase anything online. Don't just give out your personal information without ensuring that the website is secured. Number three, we have a digital communication. According to Rebel, digital communication is the electronic exchange of information. Mobile phones, HD televisions, radio, and the internet are digital systems that we use every day in order to exchange information. The advantage of this element is that we can communicate with people closer to us or even abroad. Number four, digital literacy. The process of teaching and learning about technology and the use of technology. So you need to have practical skills in using technology so that you will be able to access and manage information in a sustainable way. Number five, Digital etiquette. This is when you have good manners when communicating online. You should double check messages before sending them and you should avoid typing in all capitals as this is considered as shouting. Before you hit the send button, think, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? So do think before you post. Number six, digital law. It is defined as the electronic responsibilities for actions and deeds. It deals with, it deals with unlawful behavior such as piracy and downloading copyright items. As digital citizens, we should not commit immoral activities and you should speak up to any unlawful behavior. Number seven, we have digital rights and responsibilities. According to Rebel and Bale, digital rights and responsibilities are the privileges and freedom extended to all digital technology users and behavioral expectations that come with them. As a digital citizen, you have the right to privacy and the freedom of personal expression. However, it is also your responsibility to respect other digital citizens. The way in which you express yourself online should not be abusive to other digital citizens. Know your rights and responsibilities. Digital health and wellness. This refers to the ability to use technology such as computers and phones without straining your mind and body. That means that you should not use computers or cell phones for long hours as they can damage your eyes and you shouldn't sit for extended hours as that may cause blood flow issues that affect your health. So please try to limit your time while using your computers or cell phones 
or you could also reduce the brightness of your mobile or your computer. Number nine, we have digital security. Um, this has a lot of issues, but let's look into it. It is defined as the precautions to protect learners, staff, and organizations. Precautions such as using antivirus softwares, web services, biometrics can help protect your identity. So the issues that are, I'm talking about are scams, identity theft, stalking, harassment, and cyberbullying. So please make sure that you take the right measures to protect your identity and information. This brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for watching my video and I hope that you will take everything that I've just informed you about into consideration so that we can all create a safer and fun digital world. Keep calm and be a good digital citizen. Thank you.